something incredible we managed to observe um, talking about water holding capacity and drought stretch was when drought stress was when we did did a large scale potato trial in Washington state where we did just business as usual, you know, with a superb potato producers, some of the best potato pr producers in the state, maybe even in the world. And we, we did our program side by side, just doing different things, honoring that saying, look, we, we're feeding the soil first. It's about feeding that soil, taking care of that soil. And then the, the plants, they come afterwards. And what we found was through using microbial teas, through using exogenous food sources and mineral sources, we increased the, the population of microbes in that soil dramatically. And what that led to down the line is we had in-field soil probes monitoring electrical conductivity and total soil moisture and temperature was not only incredible things we saw in the EC, which that's the, really the only reason we put the probe there was to monitor the EC. But in fact, we found the greatest gains was in the moisture. And what we found was middle of August, uh, you know, 14, 14 hour day, day length, over 100 degrees, 40 degrees Celsius in the in the daytime temperatures, bulking tubers, we found over 100 percent increase in soil moisture capacity. But we we avoided saturation. We were still under saturation, and so it was amazing. You could dig side to side, and we found like if you dug actually the side with less water was muddier, and the side with more water over 100 percent was less muddy. You know it hadn't reached saturation, and yet. Um, Really, the main conceivable difference was carbon because we were putting carbon, massive amounts of carbon in, but really it was biology. It was those microbes. And so we talk about that. Every every one of those bug bodies, they have a, uh, you know, a phospholipid fatty acid bilayer and microbes, um, and and they're a storage unit for water. They're storing, they're not alive, unless they have fluid, they're not alive. And when they're alive, they're saturated, but that's encapsulated by that lovely little cell wall that keeps the water there, um, not in the soil, um, not, not loose in the soil, but, um, but available. And, and then of course, obviously the fungal aspect, which is, we know mycorrhizae, fungi, et cetera, are able to access water with inside soil particles that roots can't even penetrate into. And so, um, I, 